uh, Shihab from Bangladesh. In several cases, uh, we see that on a same ruling, a latest hadith abrogates the previous hadith. But my question is, does a latest Quran verse can abrogate another verse? In many lectures, I have heard that one Quran verse can abrogate another verse. But uh, one of the most, most famous die in recent times is Quran verses does not abrogate each other. Rather, it clarifies the previous verse, verses more. Okay, I will answer, inshallah. Shahab from Bangladesh, he says, I heard a scholar saying that there is no abrogation in the Quran. And uh, wallahi, I don't know where you get these so-called scholars. Akhi, not everyone with a beard and wearing something like I'm wearing and appearing on TV is a scholar. A scholar is a person who teaches authentic knowledge. In the Quran, brother uh, Shihab, if you read Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah says in the Quran, مَا نَنْسَخْ مِنْ آيَةٍ أَوْ نُنْسِهَا نَأْتِ بِخَيْرٍ مِنْهَا أَوْ مِثْلِهَا Whenever we abrogate a verse or we make it forgotten, meaning that it is totally abrogated, recitation and ruling and presence, we will bring something similar to it or better. So this is what Allah says in the Quran. And then he says, abrogation is not possible in the Quran. There are so many places in the Quran, but the time doesn't allow me to tell you about this. But I'll give you an example. The verses that talk about the prohibition of intoxications. So in the beginning, intoxications and drinking wine was totally legit and permissible. And then the prohibition started gradually. So first, Allah said, that they ask you, O Muhammad, concerning intoxications and gambling. What's the ruling? Say to them that there is some benefit and a lot of harm. And the harm outweighs the benefits. So this is stage one. So now, if I want to drink, mm, yeah, I think uh, I'll pass. Because the burden and the, ith the ithim, the, the sin is uh, far outweighing the benefits in it. So I think I'm going to skip. But it's not haram. Then the second stage came. When Allah Azza wa Jal said to the believers, do not approach prayers while you are in the state of intoxications until you are aware of what you're saying. So if you're drunk or stoned, and you want to pray, instead of saying, oh Allah, forgive me, you may say, oh Allah, curse me. So no, don't pray. Prayer is haram. So now whenever I want to have a pint of lager or a shot of whiskey, Islam tells me, listen, Isha is after five minutes. If you're going to drink, you're not going to be able to pray Isha until you sober out. And this may take five, six hours, depending on your hangover. So now, okay, there's, there are times that you're not supposed to drink. The third stage abrogated the second and the first. When Allah said, Azza wa Jal, completely to uh, uh, stay away from intoxicants. So now, the first two verses, can we apply them in our lives? This scholar of yours, if he says, yes, you can drink, but providing that you don't, don't drink at the times of prayer, he goes out of the fold of Islam. Definitely not. These two verses were abrogated. So choose who to learn from, Akhi. Uh, 